Greetings, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 186 of Ham Radio Answers. I'm planning on attending the Quartz Fest Ham Radio Gathering, which takes place January 20th through 26th in 2019. It's held in the Arizona desert on vacant BLM land just outside Quartzsite, Arizona. Most folks who come bring recreational vehicles or RVs, although you can camp in tents or come for the day in your car. My wife and I are taking our travel trailer. We need a source of power to charge the batteries up to run the lights and heater fan during the night. I have a Yamaha 2 kilowatt generator just in case, but I plan to keep the batteries charged with solar panels. A solar photovoltaic system looks like this. There is the solar panel or panels, a charge controller to keep the batteries from being overcharged, and deep cycle batteries that, unlike ordinary automobile batteries, are not damaged by drawing heavily from them between charges. After the batteries come the loads. In the case of my RV, the lights, the water pump, the fan and the propane heater, and a 12-volt assist to the propane refrigerator. I will also be running a small inverter for my CPAP machine that I use at night for breathing. The biggest power consumption is that fan in the heater. Let's talk about the solar panels themselves. I have a total of five panels that are nominally 12 volts. One is 100 watts, one is 50, and three are 30 watts. I plan on taking the 100 watt and 50 watt panels with me to Quartzsite. Both are from Evergreen and were made in the USA, although these days are produced in China. Although called a 12 volt panel, Solar panels are fundamentally current sources, producing the same amount of current, regardless of the system voltage, up to a limit where current production falls off, as shown in this diagram from an article I wrote in QST 23 years ago. It's interesting to note that the power output of a solar panel is, like for all things, the product of the current and the voltage. The highest power output is just above where the current starts to drop off as the voltage goes up. The highest power point is about 18 volts with a smidgen under the max current. So a so-called 100 watt panel will give, using the power equation, power equals current times voltage, or 100 watts divided by about 18 volts, or about 5.5 amps. In a run-of-the-mill system, the voltage is about equal to battery voltage. So at, say, 13.8 volts of a charging battery, the panel is actually providing 13.8 times 5.5, or 76 watts. So take note that the wattage rating for a panel is very optimistic. As the amount of sunlight goes down due to clouds, sunset, or trees getting in front of the panel, the current output goes down linearly with the amount of light. It is true that solar panels generate some current in cloudy conditions, but much less than in full sunlight. I put an Anderson power pole connector on the panel so I could hook it into my ham radio power system. Note that this is raw solar panel output and should not be fed directly to the battery, but to a charge controller. I double-checked polarity before attaching the red and black power pole connectors. Let's talk about batteries. There are many types. The most common are the traditional lead-acid type. Lead-acid types include traditional flooded batteries, no-maintenance batteries, and absorbed glass mat or AGM batteries, and sealed or gel cell batteries. New battery technologies are starting to eat into that market, including the lithium iron phosphate units 
that hold about the same charge per volume as lead acid, but only weigh about a quarter of their lead acid counterparts. Battery technology is a hot area of research because of the electric car market, and hams are starting to reap the benefits. This lithium iron phosphate battery, for example, is my main bench 12 volt supply and is quite light. The batteries on my trailer are traditional lead acid deep cycle batteries, meaning that unlike automobile batteries, they can withstand deep discharge prior to recharge. Let's look at the way lead acid batteries are charged. The first charge phase accepts all the current that the charging source can provide, up to a point of course. The battery voltage gradually rises as it absorbs current in what's called the bulk charge phase. Note that the battery voltage would continue to rise, eventually destroying the battery, so the charge controller starts to throttle back the current when the battery reaches 14.1 volts or so, depending on the type of battery. It will continue letting current into the battery, but holds the voltage to 14.1. This phase is called the absorption phase and provides the last 15 to 20 percent of a battery's full charge. Once the current drops to a low threshold, the battery is fully charged. The charge controller cuts off current and the battery voltage begins to fall. When it reaches 13.3, the charger allows a little current through to keep it here. This is called the float charge. This will keep the battery fully charged indefinitely until it's used. If the float charge is taken away, a fully charged battery after a few hours of rest will show 12.7 volts. If the battery is used at this point, the voltage falls until at 50% of charge, the voltage is about 12.0 volts when it's rested for a little while. Generally, a battery should not be discharged below this point. If you're using solar panels to charge your battery, the battery must be big enough to power nighttime loads and still stay above the 50% charge level. Given that we do have cloudy days, the battery bank must be big enough to last for several days before recharge. I have a large battery bank in my ham station. This large array of four 6-volt deep cycle batteries are made for exactly this application for solar, wired in series parallel for 12 volts. These sealed absorbed glass mat or AGM batteries are more than 10 years old. These used to be in my basement, but I recently moved them up into my shack to get them out of the way of a construction project. I also have a smaller Walmart Marine, so-called deep cycle battery, right next to my radio equipment that I can take mobile if need be. These Walmart batteries need to be replaced about every three years. I use 12 gauge wire, red and black, with red being the 12 volt positive. Note black is ground. This is different from AC wiring in which black is hot and white is neutral. I chose to get a new controller to take with me to QuartzFest. It's a ZAMP Solar 30 amp digital solar controller modeled ZS30A, which cost $158 at my local RV dealer, though I got 10% off because I'm a good SAM member. ZAMP's website, zampsolar.com, says everything they make is made in the USA, although nothing on the box or the controller itself indicate a country of origin. It works with panels up to 25 volts. As I mentioned earlier, the open circuit voltage on a 12 volt panel can exceed 21 or 22 volts, and the ZAMP charge controller will handle up to 25. Again, that means 12 volt panels, not 24 volt panels, which have an open circuit voltage up into the mid 30 volts and sometimes beyond. The ZAMP controller can be preset to multiple battery types, gel, AGM, wet lead acid, calcium, lithium, iron, phosphate, 
and lithium titanium oxide batteries. These have differing charge profiles, so be sure to select the right one. The ZAMP uses pulse width modulation or PWM technology, not maximum PowerPoint tracking. I do have a maximum PowerPoint tracker, but don't find that it gets much additional power out of the panels. They're great for larger fixed panel installations, but for a standalone 12 volt system such as I have, I haven't seen much benefit to the maximum PowerPoint tracker. Of course, the controller needs energy to operate. 5 milliamps is specified, that's all. At 14 volts, that's only 70 milliwatts, not much power at all. The manual is printed on glossy paper and the English was clearly written by a native English speaker. ZAMP caters to off-gridders, but mostly to RVs. Nearly everything in an RV runs off either 12 volts or propane. Here's our travel trailer in an RV park in Springdale, Utah, right outside Zion National Park. Our travel trailer runs on 12 volts, including the heater fan and water pump, but not including microwave and air conditioning. So even if we have no hookup to electricity, we can run lights, heater, and the propane refrigerator. I'll be taking the solar panels to quartzite to help keep the batteries charged. We need batteries charged for overnight heater use since it gets down to about freezing this time of year, and we can't run the generator at night per Quartzfest's rules. The Yamaha generator, to be covered in a separate video, is there as a backup to ensure our batteries stay charged, plus to run the microwave. I'm getting excited about Quartzfest, now less than two weeks away. In channel news, be sure to watch the Saturday YouTube Live sessions, held at noon U.S. Mountain Time, which is 1900 UTC. The Saturday live stream is devoted to answering your questions, whether posed at dcastler.com slash ask hyphen Dave, or sent to hamradioanswers at gmail.com. I also try to answer questions posed during the live stream chat. If you have subscribed and clicked on the bell, you should get a notice as each session goes live. If you aren't, make sure the bell is clicked and also check your spam folder. You can also go directly to the live feed at youtube.com slash C slash David Kassler slash live. Thanks for all your support, suggestions, and ideas. Please like and share this video. Your subscriptions gives YouTube your vote of confidence in my channel. If after subscribing you also click the bell, you'll get an email notification of all new channels. I like to distribute knowledge widely, and my videos are free for the viewing on YouTube. Thank you for the many patrons who are supporting this channel via patreon.com and to those who drop a little something into the tip jar at ke0og.net slash tip hyphen jar. All is most gratefully acknowledged and appreciated. Also note that I have all the amateur extra training videos available on a thumb drive for US $49.99 postpaid anywhere in the United States, so you don't need to be online to watch them. Of course, you can watch them freely on YouTube. You can see all of these options at decastlercom support. Until we next meet, 73.